Actually, now I will give the presentation on this particular thing which is hydraulic turbines under the subject hydropower engineering W466 and here actually I will cover the hydraulic turbines. So what are the objectives why we will just why we are just going through this hydraulic turbines and its basics. Number one, equipment or equipment which will be employed for converting water energy into electrical energy. Number two, different types of turbines. Number three, guidelines for selecting a specific turbine. And the number four is layout of powerhouses. Here actually in this we will cover the first three. Now it is a very important thing as you can see over here the powerhouse of a hydroelectric development project that is the place where the potential as well as the kinetic energy of the water that will be flowing through a closed channel or you can say a water conducting system is being transformed into mechanical energy of course where there will be any type of turbine mechanical turbine or rotating turbines and then further it will be converted to electrical energy where there will be some electrical transformer which is in conjugation with these rotating turbines now in order to achieve these things there will be certain important equipments all those things are necessary to control the flow that will enter to the turbine from the pedestal you are maybe you are remembering this thing that first of all we have to select the catchment area behind the water dam then there will be water reservoir there will be a surge tank after that there will be penstock and spillways of course there will be some controlling inlet and outlet valve after that of course you can use the storage as well as the bondage system after that we will come to the portion where there will be mechanical rotating turbines then there will be the portion electrical transformer in electrical power house where you can use crane you may use or may not also now what is the main thing we have to direct the flow of water against the turbine blades to get maximum efficient utilization of water power so that the efficiency should be maximum other equipments which are necessary for these couplings to link the turbine rotation to generator as well as transformers and switching equipment of course these are the three things transformers generators and switching equipments which can convey the electrical power that will be generated in the power station to the power distribution system by power line carrier communication say for a power house it will also accommodate equipments which are very much necessary for regular operation as well as maintenance of the turbine and the power generating units for example we are using overhead cranes which are required for lifting or lowering of the turbines as well as generated during the installation period or later period for repair as well as maintenance how we can run this crane we can run this crane through a range which is known as guard rails or guide rails on columns it will be fastened on columns which are essentially required the maintenance of this unit is done by lifting it by the crane and then transporting it from one end of the powerhouse and it will be kept in the other end where there will be some abundant space that is left for placing the faulty unit a workshop nearby that will provide necessary tools and space for the technicians working on the repair of these units now the important thing is that what is a control room a control room this is a very essential thing you can say this is a type of console it is also essential from where engineers can regulate valves 
for controlling water flow into turbines or monitor the performance of each unit to the main power grid that means the main power portion and what is powerhouse powerhouse is the particular portion that will receive water from the reservoir through a penstock which is actually a slopey type uh, that means there will be some inclination just to get the suitable head so that there will be much more pressure within the water jet compared to the atmospheric pressure and which may be termed as power generating units which is detached from the head works there is another one class where the power house that can utilize the water head directly from the water body which is known as run of the river we have gone through that part previously now this detached power house it may be surface or underground types depending on the position with respect to the ground surface in stream or run of river power houses are mostly surface type now if we will come to the next portion we can see there are so many hydraulic turbines what are these hydraulic turbines they will form the prime mover where the transform where there will be a transformation of energy of water into mechanical energy of rotation and whose prime function is to drive a hydroelectric generator the turbine runner as well as the rotor of the generator they are usually mounted on a same shaft and thus the entire assembly is frequently referred as turbo generator you can see over here hydroelectric plants they can utilize the energy of water falling through a certain difference in levels which they range from a few meters to 1500 meter or even 2 kilometers that means 2000 meter and to handle such a wide range of pressure heads various turbines differing in design of their working is employed modern hydraulic turbines are generally divided into two class one is impulse another one is reaction what is an impulse turbine it is one turbine which is dry in which the driving energy whatever driving energy you will supply by the water that will be in the kinetic form and the reaction turbine is where the driving energy that will be provided by the water partly in kinetic form and partly in pressure form now we can see this particular table where we can see there are certain turbines with their class and head range that means by the distance the water will fall down first of all there is propeller turbines under that there are two one is fixed blade turbine another one is adjustable blade which is also known as coupler turbine another under this there are two classes one is reaction one is reaction for this the head rate is 10 meter to 60 meter and for adjustable blade also reaction tank turbine the head rate is from 10 meter to 60 meter if we will go for diagonal flow turbines then it is also under the class reaction the head rate is from 50 meter to 150 meter if we will go for francis turbine this is another the class is under reaction turbine the head rate is from 30 meter to 400 meter even that can go from 500 up to 600 meter there is one more turbine which is of course not the class under reaction turbine it is the class under impulse turbine of course this is known as pelton turbine and the head rate is above 300 meter now for each turbine there is a water passageway which will incorporate what there will be the turbine casing there will be the stay vents stay vents are very important thing for support there will be wicket gates to flow the control or for flow control flow the control of water jet there will be a runner that will rotates the generator there will be a draft tube of on the exit channel that means at the outlet channel where there will be downstream of the turbine now we can see over here this is the thing by which we can see over here that first of all we are showing over here 
the vertical section of two turbine the first one is reaction turbine and the second one is impulse turbine in the reaction turbine as well as in the impulse turbine we can see over here we have just pointed out several position by arabic numerals 1 2 3 4 5 6 etc well the first one is water intake the second one is this slopey region for water intake here is the water intake here is the water intake this is the head level from water the from which the water will come down this is the head level from which the water will come down this is for reaction this is for impulse so this will be the pen stock for both of the cases after that the third one is the spiral case and the fourth one will be the runner if we can see over here the spiral case and the runner both of them are present over here runner is that particular thing which will rotate the turbine now what will be the fifth and sixth one fifth and sixth one will be nothing but the draft tube as well as the nozzle nozzle means that close conduits or pipe through which it will come out so now if we we'll go further we can see over here the following characteristics of turbine say for the first one we are coming to reaction turbine first of all the wheel passage remains completely filled with water that means there should not be any empty space the second one that means the water acting on the wheel vanes that means at their periphery is under pressure which is greater than that of atmospheric pressure what is the third one the water inlet through the water inlet when the water jet enters it will enter and it will pass through all around the periphery of the wheel through the scroll case there is a case known as scroll case that close conduit is known as scroll case and what is the fourth one energy is in the form of both pressure and kinetic that is utilized by the wheel whereas if we will go for this one that means if we will go for the turbine section for impulse type turbine we will see over here there are four other characteristics of course the wheel passages are not completely filled with water since the jet that will come out of the penstock nozzle it will strike some buckets which is known as buckets of a runner but it is written over here buckets of the runner it will directly hit over there and from there it will be supplied to the rotor portion of the turbine after that we will come to the next one the water acting on the vents or buckets located at the wheel periphery is under atmospheric pressure that means water pressure and atmospheric pressure both of them are nearly equal now the water impact on the runner at one point or at few discrete point it will depends on the number of nozzles that means the number of nozzles through which the water jet will be managing and the fourth one is energy applied to the wheel is completely kinetic so these are the figures of reaction turbines we can see over here that means these are the portions of reaction turbine and if we will go through reaction turbine we can see over here there are five portions one is steering one is wicket gates one is operating ring one is turbine comber and the fifth one is the turbine case what is a steering it will form the outer support of the turbine case and it resists heavy loads imposed by the equipment and the concrete of the powerhouse structure what is wicket gate it it will be providing the uh, inside portion of the steering just to regulate the discharge of water and direct the water flow towards the runner by a certain angle also these wicket gates serve to start up and start up and shut down any turbine and controlling its power output as well as the rotation and speed third one is operating ring what is the function of the operating ring operating ring 
to which gates are connected by some guides of course some slotted guides there will be some slot and of course there will be some levers present over there which are rigidly fastened to their top spin that means it will be located at the top position and the next one is nothing but known as turbine cover what is a turbine cover the operating ring is installed in a recess provided in the turbine cover which in turn rests in a recess made in the upper ring of the wicket gates the turbine cover gives support to the turbine bearing and separates the water passageway through the turbine from the dry turbine pit now there are also axial flow reaction turbines as well as radial flow reaction turbines as well as diagonal flow reaction turbines we can see over here if we will come to the next portion we can see the impulse turbine also under which there is a particular portion known as pelton turbine and how we will go through or how we will come to the portion which is known as choice of turbine for which we have to go to a particular thing known as specific speed until this we are just covering and after that from this graphical representation we will come to our next lecture thank you very much